Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Destination Imagination, this is Mission Control, Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Britt Dyer. How do you hear me? We hear you clearly. Don, what is the one, what are you allowed to take with you to space and what is the one thing that you wish that you were allowed to take? Oh, the one thing I wish I would have taken would have been some filter materials for helping take pictures out the window. Joe, what is the most important part of your spacesuit? Well, the uh, our spacesuit is really like a uh, almost like a spaceship, because when we're in our spacesuit, we have to live just like we do inside either the space station or the uh, the Soyuz that we come up in. So everything is important. I hate to give you that answer, but we need to have oxygen. We need to be able to stay warm or stay cool. Um, we need to be able to scrub out the CO2. So really, it's a, it's a whole big machine and all of it's necessary to keep us safe. Andre, how do you do your laundry? <laughs> short, Aston, short answer, uh, we do not. Actually, we don't wash our clothes uh, because water is very precious and uh, so we don't have any washing machine up here. Uh, so what we do, we wear it and uh, yeah, if it's, if it's dirty, then uh, we have to, uh, to throw it. So this is how we do our laundry. Don, can you have pets on the space station? Can you have pets on Space Station? If you consider some of the creatures we have for experiments, pets, then we do. On uh, my shuttle flight, we had Drosophila larvae. And these Drosophila larvae, I don't know whether you call them a pet, but these Drosophila larvae were there for food for our spiders. And I don't really know whether you'd call a spider a pet. Usually that's something you step on. Uh, so so uh, I guess uh, we really don't have pets on Space Station, but we do have experiments. Joe, can you take a shower in space? And how do you keep, and how do you keep the salt from flowing away? See, life is good on the space station. We don't have to do laundry, and we don't have to take showers. So no, we don't take showers up here, because like you said, the water would just float away, and it would be a big mess. And like Andre mentioned earlier, water is very precious. So we have washcloths that we can get wet, and we have some rinse-free uh, soap and shampoo that we can put in our hair and our body. But uh, no nice, long, hot showers for us. Andre, how do you stay connected to your family? Yes, yes. That, oh, that's a nice question. We have um, uh, several means of uh, contacting uh, the family and the ground and other people and friends. Uh, and uh, we can do this by normal, well, normal uh, telephone. We have fired a satellite. I can call the normal telephone network and then I can, can call anybody in the world if we have contact with a satellite. And once a week we have a video connection. So I can also see uh, my children and uh, that is very nice, of course. Um, Don, do you believe there's life beyond Earth and are you doing anything in, in the space station to look for it? Uh, uh, we think we've found uh, Mars meteorites that have evidence of microbial life. So if this is true, then uh, there is uh, life outside of Earth particularly in the microbial form, 
in the Mars strata. We're not sure about this yet, but uh, it 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 is an interesting uh, scientific investigation that's going on in terms of looking for life on space station uh, besides observing meteor showers which may contain meteorites that uh, come from Mars with uh, fossilized bacteria we really don't look for for uh, signs of life on space station except inside the spacecraft when I'm looking at one of my crewmates <laughs> <clears throat> Joe, how do you go to the bathroom in um, space? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you have to be very, very careful. Um, it's a, uh, it takes a little bit longer than it does on Earth, as you can imagine. In microgravity, things tend to want to float away, and you don't want that to happen. So we have a very sophisticated toilet where it can catch things. We have a, a tube uh, to urinate in, and it's kind of neat because we actually recycle that water and then we drink it. Um, and then we have a bucket to catch number two. And it's a very important system for us up here because we need to use it all the time every day. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do to become an astronaut? Yeah, well, uh, there's many ways to become an astronaut, um, the, the, but the, the best way, the normal way to, uh, to achieve that is to study very hard, uh, to do your best at school, and then uh, later on in the university uh, and, and become some uh, become a specialist in, uh, in a certain area in science, in technology uh, and those are important uh, uh, fields to, to study and then of course you need to go through a selection uh, so it's a long way but it's not impossible we are up here and uh, when I was a kid, I didn't realize that it was possible until I tried. So, uh, uh, so study hard, and who knows? Don, since you can't go grocery shopping, what do you do if the space station runs out of food? Fortunately, we've never run out of food, but we are in a frontier setting and we are dependent on wagons bringing supplies up to us and these wagons are called spaceships and sometimes we run low on food because as you pointed out we cannot go straight to a grocery store to refill the pantries and this happened during our expedition where for a month we had to live on half rations in order to save enough food for future expeditions and now we've got plenty of food but at that time we were we're conserving food for the future and this is what happens when you live on the frontier joe how did you get into space and how long does it take to get there well we all came aboard on a russian soyuz spaceship and to get into space, it only takes a little over eight minutes. So we launched in, uh, in Kazakhstan, and then eight minutes later, you're in space, you're floating, but then it takes us another two days to get to the International Space Station. Andre, why did you choose to become an astronaut? Well, it started with some science fiction uh, uh, books that I got from my grandmother. And I thought, well, this is interesting. Uh, space suits and uh, spacecraft, planets with aliens and things like that. Then I saw beautiful pictures and IMAX movies from the shuttle flights. And I thought, wow, this is beautiful to see the Earth from outer space. And then I, I, uh, I also learned how useful it was. And uh, I, was a medical, I became a medical doctor. And uh, then I thought, OK, this is three it's exciting three things it's exciting it's beautiful and it's very useful so that were the main reasons for me to become an astronaut
Don, what do you do if someone gets really sick on a space station? If someone gets really sick, which fortunately that has not happened, we, uh, we uh, first off call the ground and there's a flight surgeon on call and we work with the flight surgeon and our medical kits that we have on station. We have pretty substantial medical kits and we uh, do what we can to, to uh, fix the ailing, ailing crew member. For Joe, who came up with the idea for the space station and who decides what you do when you are up there? Well, that's a very good question. Um, the International Space Station, like it implies, is was put together by many different countries. And so I don't know if there was one individual that came up with the idea, but coming to space is very, very difficult and it's very expensive. So it made sense for us to pool our resources together and work as one planet to build the space station. And each of the different space agencies, they look at what types of science they want to do up here. There's various review boards that look at that. So there's a long process. The scientists have to put together their experiment. And then finally they come up here and then we're lucky enough to go ahead and implement those uh, experiments. Andre, what do you do for fun in space? What do I do for fun in space? Well, the, the best thing is, of course, to float, which is not so easy if you cannot hold yourself. So this is always fun. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, and of course, it's fun to play with, with fluids, with water, uh, little, uh, little droplets. Uh, so um, uh, we, we can have a lot of fun up here. Um, uh, we, we eat uh, together in the evenings and sometimes watch a movie. Uh, and of course, we can uh, call the ground and uh, uh, we enjoy ourselves in many ways. Don, why do you sleep on in space? What do we sleep on in space? Actually, we don't sleep on anything because that's a gravity earth centric thought. In space, we sleep in something. We sleep in our sleeping bags and we just float inside of our sleeping bags. And actually our sleeping bags do two things. One, they keep us warm because you're sleeping and your metabolism's lower and, and you can get chilled just like you wear blankets when you're sleeping on a bed. And the other thing a sleeping bag does, since you're sleeping in it, it keeps you contained. It keeps you from drifting around because you may uh, go to sleep uh, uh, against a wall and wake up on the ceiling and and so it, it it keeps you in one place so we don't sleep on anything we sleep in for Joe how do you eat when you're wearing a spacesuit yeah unfortunately uh, you cannot eat while you're wearing the spacesuit and so if you go out and you do a spacewalk, they usually last between, you know, six and a half, seven hours. And so for that time, uh, you cannot eat. We do have a drink bag inside the suit, so you can drink water. And so when you get done and you get out of that spacesuit, uh, one of the first things you want to do is go to the bathroom and eat. Um, this is for Andre. If there are no pipes or hoses running from Earth to the space station, how do you get clean drinking water, and where does the dirty water go? Well, that's, of course, an interesting observation. There's no pipes and hoses, but there's also no power lines, for example. And still we have uh, we have our energy. Uh, so we have a lot on board. Uh, the energy comes from, uh, from the solar panels. Uh, and the water, well, the water is brought up by spacecraft. But we also, what I said before, we recycle a lot of water. So the water that is in your breath, the, the water from perspiration from the, from the exercise, and also the water in the urine, is recycled and we make drink water out of it again. So we, we, we recycle it. Now the water is also used to make oxygen. So we split the water in hydrogen and oxygen. So we have the oxygen coming also from the water. And we recycle and now and then we bring up some new water. That is how we do it. 
Don, what do it smell like in space? What does it smell like in space? Well, inside the spacecraft, it smells sort of like a combination of a engine room on a ship and a gymnasium, some, somewhere like that. And, uh, and, but, but outside said smell is a, a atmosphere born uh, scent. When you're in the vacuum of space, of course, there's no smell, at least not in the, the, the standard sense of the word. For Joe, are your thoughts and feelings different in space? That's a good question. I think my my feelings are about the same. Um, you know, the the same emotions that you have on Earth, you have here, and then your sense if you you know cut yourself. So all those kinds of things are the same. But your thoughts they have to be a little bit different because now we're in an environment without gravity that of course we've lived our whole lives with gravity and so you think one way when you set the glass down it's going to stay there if i want to go from one place to another i have to walk where now we float from one place to another by using our hands and if you want to set something down you can't just let it go you need to stick it to the wall otherwise it'll float away so a lot of those minor thoughts and things that we do every day on earth they are different when you get into space Joe, Don, and Andre, on behalf of Destination Imagination and Philadelphia University, we can't thank you enough for this incredible opportunity. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Destination Imagination. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.